rolling, rolling, rolling. What? Rolling, 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 rolling. Yeah. Rolling, 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 rolling. Come on. You gotta keep goddamn about you supposed to keep going. <laughs> I'm waiting for you. Uh, uh, the, the, move in, the, 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 move yeah. out. Hands up, my hands down. Back up, back up. Tell me what I you're gonna what do, do now. now. Breathe in and breathe out. Hands up, now hands down. Back up, back up. Tell me what you're gonna do now. Okay. Keep rolling, 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 rolling. <laughs> All right, man. What's going on, y'all? What's going on, people? How we doing, man? We got the heavy hitters coming to you Wednesday. Definitely shout out to Big Will. Everything Atlanta sports beforehand. I mean, coach. coach. Him and coach. So definitely oh, shout goodness. out to those two. Um, hey, your boy K Styles here, aka the six man, stage left. As you already know, it is Mad Mike Sports, aka Senator. Powerful team, yeah. And we got the one, the only Jew Talk Sports, aka the Minister. What's the word, Dirty Bird? What's the word? And you are tuning in to the heavy hitters. Oh, hey, I Boop. need a fan right now. I don't know why I'm so freaking hot right now, bro. I'm just gonna sit this in front of me. It's hot as a mug right now. Uh, I think this is. I think. Hold on. Let me. Hold on. Let me. It's see. Like seventy eight early when I looked at it, but that was a long. That was like around one o'clock or something. It's, it's hot up in Europe. So it's supposed to rain here. I think it's supposed to rain here in a minute. Here in a little bit. Oh wow! But, oh, really? Right, right. But like you said, man, welcome to the heavy hitters. As we already know, man, appreciate everybody coming in. Hey, man, we're going to close your night out the right way. Got a good one for you tonight. So before we get started with the show, Mike, you know what to do. It's the R-E-A-L. However the hell you spell roll call. Call. I ain't feel like spelling all. Look, I ain't feel like you can all spell all those words. All right, I know I spell roll call, y'all. I just didn't feel like doing it. Right? <laughs> and, and, and as we, I do have an education, y'all. I do have an education. Hey, hey, we, 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 hey, hey, we've all educated over here. Even though mm-hmm. I said educated, educated, yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did right. You know, we from right. the south. Right. You know how they think about people from the south. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, they think yeah, we yeah. already slip anyway. Yeah, exactly. But um, today's roll call, we're gonna definitely kick it off. The first roll, the first, the the, the the man in first place tonight. We got Robert Ponder. Oh, it's field. tied up. Oh my God, they tied the game up. Wow. I'm, oh my bitch. Oh no, I you forgot. Did? Yeah. I oh forgot. yeah, yeah. We can't be the spoiling sixes, games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can't my be bad, spoiling games bad. right now. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it, Mike. It's all good. My bad, my bad. My bad. We got John St. Clair. Got my girl Sonya in the building. Emerald Knight, Jane Sonya, Dua, Floyd Donnelly, Old Chicken Holler, JB, Dre Murphy. We got Christy Lewis. But I will say one thing the conglomerate got a surprise coming for y'all real soon. Mm. I don't know if y'all ready for that. Mm. Let's see, we got Georgia, Texas boy coming in here. All right. Make sure y'all go ahead and hit that share button. I know y'all, I know we tell y'all to go ahead and hit that like button, but definitely share this out to your peoples, your family, your side chicks, your pets, whoever. Mm-hmm. We got yeah, a yeah. coming for you tonight. Yeah, uh, uh, gambling. Uh, uh, never mind. Hi, hi, I'll, hi, keep hi, hi. I'll keep that one to myself. That, that's that's oh, that's I'll to be. be... <laughs> all right, that's so, to be announced. All right, so. Oh, you want to talk about that, Mike? Hi, hey, first I mean, of all, first of all, fellas, how are we doing this evening, Mike? You, how y'all doing this evening, man? I'm I'm wonderful, <clears throat> man. Can't complain, sir. I'm doing good, man. Just chilling. Okay. Watching it, look, watching the game and doing the show at the same time. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, mine sitting right in front of me. Hey, look, hey, hey, I got some, I got somewhat going on over here. 
uh, some things happen. I don't want to talk about that. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but uh, like I said, we got about whatever in here as well. We got two topics tonight, y'all. Um. <laughs> John St. Clair said he's sharing all his side chicks right now. <laughs> John! <laughs> he been hanging around us too much. Way too long. Come he on, He's been bro. watching us too long. <laughs> Way too. <laughs> all right. All right. Hey, so how y'all want to do, how y'all want to kick this off? I know we got a couple topics we got tonight, y'all. Um, as you already know, the main topic of the show is uh, what if scenario? Mm. Because we got some folk that's going to be emotional about us talking about corners. Between the two corners that have recently got top 30 visits to the Atlanta Falcons in Terry, Terry and Arnold and Quinn and Mitchell. I don't you go ahead and just start on that. Now, <clears throat> as we've already know, Ju and Mike have recently done videos discussing the topics of Terry and Arnold. I hope I'm saying that right. Yeah, Terry and Arnold and Quinn and Mitchell. Since these two guys are really rated number one and number two corners in this year's draft. And there is a <clears throat> possibility that they may go this route. So I'm going to let you run point on this one. Between the two, who do you think? If they draft corner, I, I'm gonna have to keep saying this <laughs> because we know you got some folks that may be slow or may be too emotional to, to think of anything outside of Dallas Turner right now. Out of these two corners, who do you think is the best fit for what the Falcons got going on this year? I think out of the two. Um, I watched more film on Terry on Arnold, more tape, but I was looking at Quinion Mitchell as well. Personally, I think Terry on Arnold is the best corner in this draft. If it was up to me out of those two guys, I would go with Terry on Arnold. Um, just for the mere fact that they're two different types of corners to me, Terry on Arnold is that guy that's like really good in coverage. One man that can play man can play zone. Uh, played against top competition, you know, in the SEC at Bama. Um, and to me, he can do it all. Like, I did a video on Kool-Aid McKinstry versus Terry on Arnold, like those two guys, because both of those guys uh, visited the Falcons. And to me, Terry on Arnold is a guy that can do everything. He can make, you know, make tackles in open space. He also is good at uh, locating the football. And I think um, just because he played at Bama, it, he really doesn't have many weaknesses in this game. He can play inside or outside slot or outside corner. Of course, if the Falcons take him in the first round, he'll probably be an outside corner. They'll probably put a guy like Clark Phillips in the slot because he's smaller um, as far as like size wise. But Quinion Mitchell, when I looked at his, you know, highlights and stuff like that, of course, we know he played at Toledo and he played a lot of off corner meaning he wasn't in a lot of press man situations he would just sit back and read the qu uh, quarterback's eyes so to me he kind of gives me vibes of uh trayvon Diggs for the, the cowboys like if you want a quarterback a cornerback that's going to get interceptions and that's going to play off and things of that nature and just read the quarterback's eyes like in zone and man he he's really good at taking the ball away he's physical the only thing that kind of like scares me about him is I haven't seen him play against the top competition. They played a few games, like they played against Notre Dame, and he proved that he could do it all, similar to Terion Mitchell. I just know that Terion Mitchell has been tested because he's played in the SEC. So he's get went up against NFL, uh, NFL wide receivers consistently because we know the LSUs, the Alabamas, like he's going up against those top wide receivers that practice every day. And we know that Nick Saban is one of those guys that, 
usually puts out a good product when it comes to, you know, corner and secondary is like what Nick Saban is specializes in. So if it's out of those two guys, personally, I'm going to go with the guy that's played against top competition. Um, but Queen Al Mitchell is a guy that, you know, showed out at the combine. Like he's a freak athlete and he's a guy that can take the ball away as well. But I'll go with Terry on Arnold just for the mere fact that he played at Bama. He's seen the top guys and, you know, at Bama, you're going to see it all. You know, in the SEC in general, if you're a cornerback or a defensive player, you're going to go up against the top competition. So I would go with Terry on Arnold. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> now, 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 before I get the mic, I'm a, I'm a quote strengths and weakness that is on, that is based on NFLDraftBuzz.com. So it's definitely shout out to that website. I don't give a fuck like uh, Camarino writing for their ass. Fuck them. I've been using this website for years, so I, I deal with it. Um, <clears throat> so with Terry and Arnold, I'm 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 I'm, I'm read this. The summary on him is for those that may not know, is uh his transition from safety to cornerback showcases versatility, but a keen aptitude for defensive play. Pretty much what you saying as far as the versatility and the ability to, you know, just, 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 just be around the football. Because I know from what I've seen from him is he's around the football a lot. And we ain't talking about just interceptions. We talking about right there. But one thing I will say that he his weakness is at is sometimes he gets too damn physical. I'm very handsy. <laughs> and, 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 and you start seeing yellow flags flying out anywhere. So mm -hmm. I'm like, hey. But Mike, question goes to you as well. Um the question is whether or not the question is is system and scheme now if you're talking about which is the better corner as far as versatility uh all that he brings tackling coverage zone man like you you, you can put him um i'm gonna go with Tyrion, as far as that is concerned, um, there's going to be a transition for him because he's so handsy, physical. He likes to get physical. He's get way too touchy. Um, it reminds me of a lot of Robert Alford in regards to him just being a little bit too handsy in the NFL. You can't be a handsy uh, corner. They're going to hit you with 15,000 flags uh, and then not make any qualms about it. They love to throw fags at corners in, in the NFL. So that's one adjustment that he's going to have to make coming into the NFL. And, and quite frankly, I'm going to just say this. I, I This is the first time I actually paid attention to him. So I, like me, I, I've been doing it so long. I really don't need long to kind of figure out what a corner is uh, before what I've seen so far. Um, he's not a corner that's going to get you a lot of picks. He's essentially uh, Desmond Trufant. He's essentially A.J. Terrell. Those guys are going to give you versatility. They're going to play on right, left side. They're going to play on the slot. He's going to give you all of that. But if you're looking at a guy that's going to get you picks, interceptions, um, he's not that guy. So it's whether or not what type of corner you want. If you want a cover guy that you're going to put in zone, you're going to put him in anywhere on the field, Terry on is your guy. He's not going to get you interceptions. This year was his first year. Um, where he had, you know, more than one interception. He had five interceptions this year. Um, but last year, his, his, his sophomore year, he had one interception his uh, freshman year. Um, didn't have any, didn't play a lot. So, um, I mean, being at Alabama, he went to any other school, he probably would have got, you know, uh, a little bit more playing time. But being that it's Alabama, you're not going to see a lot of, um, a lot of, 
corners there unless you, you know, a, a Travis Hunter or something like that. You know, you got to be a special athlete in order to get that type of playing time at Alabama and Georgia. Um, but if you're looking for a guy that, you know, for picks and we're going to get into that, Terry Hunter is not that guy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And another thing, and let me give a few more shots out to people that just may be coming in right now. We got. Let, let, let me let me clear that what I just said, that last statement. As of right now, where his career stands, because some sometimes guys are not interception guys in in college, or they get an NFL that learn how to be um, to get uh, after the ball. And this is why we got guys like Jerry Gray. It's like Jerry Gray is one of those defensive back coaches that he can teach you how to make plays. You see what he did, even with Jesse Bates. Jesse Bates wasn't a guy that didn't get a lot of picks. He's he's been a uh, he's been an all around as far as his his range, being able to tackle, playing both safety spots. Like he's always had that ability, but when he got to Atlanta, for whatever reason, it just took him to a whole another level. So the Falcons do have coaches where they can teach these guys how to get after the ball. So I want to clear that up. And one thing that helps them get after the football is what you pressure. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. So you must pipe so, or you make diamonds is one is one or the other. <laughs> uh-huh. And for those that may not know what you just said, trenches matter for corners as well. But uh give give a few more shots out of people just now coming in. Like you said, we got anime in the building, y'all. She oh, in the gosh. building. Oh, <laughs> we got Brian Peoples. Southside, Xavier Littman. We got the therapist in here. We got oh, B. Lord. We got B. Nard in the building, y'all. B. B. Nard. <laughs> Dreddy in here. So appreciate y'all coming in. Uh, and like I said, and, and I want y'all that's watching the show too. Who would you choose out of the two? If this was somewhere they was going in the first round this year. Who was your favorite out of Terry and Arnold and Quinn and Mitchell? Let me know if y'all like this kind of uh, breakdown because, you know, this is we, – we've done this before, but let, let us know if you like this breakdown, you know, just on um, different scenarios and different players. It may not be all the prospects, but, like, mm-hmm. if you got two prospects y'all want us to kind of – you know, right. give our thoughts on. Just let us know right. if y'all like this. Cause, Cause we got, cause we got about two weeks before. We got about a week and a half before the damn draft. Mm-hmm. So y'all, y'all better get right. him in here. Mm-hmm. Um, but when it comes to Queen and Miss, here's a quote. Here's another quote from the same website that has put it, that that they say about him. They say he has the tools to make an immediate splash in the NFL, but he's got some polishing to do. His, he has the knack for locking down zones, uh. but his transition from reading the play to making his move has a hitch in it, which means athletically, Queen and Mitchell is the better player athletically. Yeah, that Mike just made, with coaching. Yeah, but Mike made a key point too. And this is why when we when we had the conversation about pass rushers last time, do you want the athletic gift guy or do you want the guy that's already got the two, who's already a step ahead? And this is this is kind of a decision that they have to make based on what they want. Mm-hmm. Me personal, me personally, I love the athletic guy. Like I said, Quinn Mitchell, he kind of reminds me of Tariq Woolen. Same type of same, not as big as him, but it's the freak athlete at the position thing. A former wide receiver turn corner, you know, stuff like that. But I think for what this team needs, this team, especially in the corner at, at the cornerback position, because 
If you really, if you really look at the corner position, we're really we're a lot thinner than people are giving or uh, talking about. And Terry and Arnold, to me, I think me personally may be the best overall fit. Because, well, like you said, as long as, like you said, as long as you build in the trenches, as long as you get that pressure up front, I could take a chance. I could take a chance on passing on a guy who may get that. I got a question though. Go ahead. Got a question because that's the thing. In the NFL, you can't pay two cover corners. Mm-hmm. We already have AJ Terrell. He's a elite cover corner. No matter what scenario where you put him on the field, he can't cover. But he mm-hmm. doesn't get picks. So the question is, if you have Atlanta Falcons, you have a decision to make. Because if Terry Arnold is the best cover corner in this draft, now you have two cover corners. So if you have two cover corners in AJ Terrell and Terry Arnold, but you know for a fact that a guy like can you admit you he's going to get you interceptions he's going to make plays on the ball what do you do from an Atlanta Falcons standpoint that's the question I have for you that's the other thing too that's the thing you got one you got one guy who's gonna you got one guy who's tech technical and you got another mm-hmm. who who takes chances mm-hmm. what do you value mm-hmm. and the question and the question, I'm gonna counteract that question with a question for the both of y'all. <laughs> case styles, all the case styles can do that. <laughs> now, if this scenario happens, if one of these two guys is the pick that is in, are you more comfortable taking them at eight or trading back? Trading back. I'm trading back. I'm not taking no corner at eight. Heck no. Absolutely. No eight. But okay. I think that there was a very – y'all both posed really good questions, and I like these kind of conversations because you guys know I love hypotheticals. And as they always say, two things can be true. And I'm going to – look, I'm going to give my own little hypothetical because I think this is very interesting. So <laughs> What is going on right now? <laughs> This is not going to really be a question, but it's going to be like where you guys can expound on it. So I think that both guys would work with this team. Mm-hmm. If the Falcons take Terry on Arnold, if I'm AJ Terrell, I know that I need to tighten up because that basically means mm. that they're trying to bring in somebody possibly to replace you. Damn it, you. You, you get where I was going to go. Yeah. 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 Keep going. Keep going, man. I'm loving it. Yeah, Keep going. They're bringing in somebody to replace you. Um, now, if they go with Quinn Yon Mitchell and they trade back, he still could kind of replace AJ Terrell. But I think he could work in this scheme. And the reason I say that, if you guys go look at, and that's why I compared him to Trayvon Diggs, the year that, you know, Dan Quinn went over there, we know that he loved running cover three. He loves running zones. And I believe that this defense is going to be similar where we're going to run a lot of zone. He could possibly, Quinion Mitchell could possibly be the perfect fit for a zone. Because you just mentioned he's a great zone corner because he wants to clue, you know, watch the quarterback's eyes and then jump and, you know, bait the quarterback and then, you know, step in and make interceptions and things of that nature. So I think both guys could work. But if it's Terry on Arnold, I think that that means that they're looking to replace AJ Terrell because he hasn't got mm. his contract. If Terry on Arnold come in here and prove that he can be right on that level with AJ, that means AJ could be out the door next year. They're not going to give him that big contract. They're going to say, look, we're going to just replace him and we're going to hope that Clark Phillip grows. We're going to hurt that some of these guys that we got on this roster, that they step up to the plate and we'll mm-hmm. just see what we can do. We'll see what we can draft and develop, similar to what Kansas City just did with Sneed. Let them go. They draft and develop. Let go, draft and develop. I think that that could be a thing that they do because we know that this coaching staff, we have a lot of secondary specialists in this on this coaching staff. You got Raheem Morris. You have Jerry Gray. We have a ton of DB coaches on this on this coaching staff, so they're not afraid to develop that position. So 
AJ Terrell, like he really gonna have to tighten up this year. He's gonna have to have his best year this year. He's gonna have to have his best year, no matter who they draft, even if they go Dallas Turner, because I still think if we go Dallas Turner in the first round, I still think in the second round they're gonna take a corner. And the guys that we're talking about could still be on the board. Mm-hmm. Some of these guys, Quinion Mitchell could drop, Terry Arnold could drop, or you could trade back into the first round. If we trade back in the first round, you could come right back up in the first round and get one of these guys. So I really think that it's interesting. Two things can be true. Both of these guys could work in this Atlanta Falcons scheme. It just depends on what they want. Mm-hmm. Damn it, man. Damn it, man. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I, 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 I feel intellectually invigorated right now with this conversation. <laughs> but let's get yeah. into some of these comments right quick. Um uh, like I said, T. Terry says, uh, yeah, DJ Tampa out of Iowa State. Um, I gotta definitely check him out. I've, I've been hearing that name a lot here lately. I definitely gotta check him out. Um, but pre, 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 appreciate the comment. Terry, uh, Benny G here says, Queen scared me after watching the senior bowl. Got burnt by Corley and Luke McCaffrey easily in the 1v1s. Atlanta needs a D uh, in or a doomsday if he's there. London and Pitts haven't made the leap. Sound like, okay, what are you about to say on that one? I could give two you know what's about one on one in a in, in, in a combine setting. That's all it is. None of that matters in football because it's just going to be 11 guys on the field. You have a safety, a, a linebacker, all these guys right there to help you, including what you always state, a front seven to get after the quarterback. So none of all that one-on-one stuff, none of that matters because, to be honest, you ain't got five seconds to try to get open in a one-on-one. You got about two to three seconds to get, like most quarterbacks are talking to get the ball out under three seconds. So you don't even have that long to even get guys uh, to get burnt in the NBA, uh, the NBA. And good God almighty, yeah, this this Miami Heat game uh, with the Sixers, yeah, they, they all fire right now. But like I said before, they do – you won't have time. So I don't, I don't get – don't get caught up in the combines. Don't get caught up in all of this um, – the senior pro bowls, days. none of that. Pro the days. pro days, don't get caught up in it. None of that gonna matter when they get on the field because you're gonna a lot of people gonna run a lot of double teams. They're gonna run a lot of um, cloud coverages to cut off the field. None of that gonna matter. And definitely shout out to 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 uh, to Auntie here. How she you said, doing? She says she's excited. The draft is near. She can't wait. Oh man, I think and I think with the acquisitions and stuff like that mm-hmm. and the expectations that's coming with it now i think it's an, it's an exciting time right now as a falcon fan not of just one player but as a falcon fan now since we had so eloquently asked questions, I have another one for the fellas here as well. And this is kind of going off of what you was talking about, where AJ has to has to step his game up if either one of these guys are picked in the first round, whether it be eight or a little bit later. How confident do you think the Falcons are willing to give AJ Terrell the market value that he would have if he has a good season. I think if um if he has a really good season, I really still think that they're going to try to somehow some way we know that Terry is going to try to get some type of hometown discount. So I don't think that AJ Terrell is going to get the bag as we say. I can see him oh, he, a contract mm-hmm. But I don't think that he's getting like the he's gonna be the highest paid corner in the NFL. I don't see it happening. You don't bring in all those. You don't bring in all these DB coaches if you're gonna give him a bag. I, that's just I, I'm sorry. I don't see it. They didn't bring a lot of pass rush specialists in here. Okay, 
as far mm-hmm. as the coach is concerned. So when you look at that and you look at what AJ Terrell can do, yeah, he's one of the better cover corners and uh, complete corners in the NFL, but you don't bring in all the DB coaches if you're going to pay your guy, you know, record money. So I agree yeah. with you. Yeah, because what you call? I know. I think they said Jerry Sneed is now the highest paid corner in the league. Yeah, he ain't getting mm-hmm. that money. He's not getting that money. I'm sorry. But to be honest, I feel like the Titans overpaid for him as well. And I mentioned hey, so, that part mm-hmm. him mm-hmm. and move. No you are a freaking idiot for that. that yeah, mm-hmm. no disrespect. But like they said, you know, in free agency, free agency, the team that normally gets the player usually overpays. Always overpays. Yeah. So they overpaid. Mm-hmm. They had to kind of overpay to get him to leave uh, Kansas right. City. But I don't think that he's going to live up to – we're going we're gonna to see, but I don't think he's going to live up to that contract. So with the real question, K, that I have on your question, and we all got questions tonight, is will <laughs> it be any other team that will be willing to pay A.J. Terrell top dollar? Because to be honest with you, I don't know if it will be another team out there – that'll pay him they'll pay him but i don't think that they'll pay him like even make him the highest pay like him to jump sneed unless your team is just terrible and it's like okay we just getting him for a gate attraction i really don't see it because what has he done to like we know that the average fan if it's a cornerback they looking at interceptions that's the reason why sneed actually got that money because he gets interceptions and he's been winning Super Bowls with Kansas City. So he's been playing in these games where everybody's watching. So the mm-hmm. casual fan that kind of like knows him. But let's be real. Does the casual fan really knows A.J. Terrell? I mean, outside of Atlanta. Because he doesn't get a lot of interceptions. So when I, when, anytime I ask the casual fan, name your top five corners, A.J. Terrell's name never comes up. I'm just being honest. Mm-hmm. That's no out of A.J. Terrell. It just doesn't. I don't know about you guys, but I know y'all live in Georgia. But personally, when I ask people, they don't. Even though I say top 10 corners, they don't never mention A.J. Terrell's name. I'm just being honest. I, I think, I think, like you said, when, when, when it comes to asking that question to certain people, that's what they're going to look at. They're going to look at the interceptions more so than the overall body of work. And like you said, and like you said, A.J.'s main issue here is necessarily it's the dropped interceptions. It's knocking yourself out two times a year it, 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 like said, getting be in the red zone at the more you know at least yeah. time, like, so, it's stuff like that so so that's the stuff that's going and definitely shout out to william william that, that's one of our affiliates well, yeah, over, what's going from, on brother from overseas, from overseas. overseas that one about overseas but um AJ like 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 AJ Terrell's future here in Atlanta is going to be depending on what they do with this pick. And I know I made I look I, I have a a video I uh, actually have a a series about uh, AJ Terrell and my honest take on it. So if you guys want to check that out, you can check out mm-hmm. um, that. Just look through the playlist. Uh, but the thing is with AJ Terrell, it's like we got to understand what pl- what players now teams are not making these moves because they don't like the player. They're making these moves because they're financially strapped. Like when you have, and a lot of this due to you guys. I'm looking you right in the eyes, all right, with my big eyes. I'm looking at you. You the fan are the reason why we are in this. In, in, in this particular moment, because guess what? All y'all want to see is the quarterback. So when you value the quarterback the way it is, naturally money, they're going to put more money into the quarterbacks. So when you put more money to the quarterbacks and seeing quarterbacks and want to see quarterback run 4,000 yards and pass for 4,000 yards, guess what? The money is going to go. Like, you're going to have to pay them 40, 50, 60 million dollars because that's what you. So when the money for the quarterback go up, Every other position that's tied to that, whether it's you know defensive line, cornerbacks, wide receivers, running backs, um, left tackles because they got a pad, they got a uh, pass protect. Like all of these things are going to go up. So when you see that, this is what happens. And a lot of times, guys like AJ Terrell are going to get left behind because you're going to pick up a defensive line before you pay a deep, uh, defensive back. 
And that's fact, because I'm going to pay a defense alignment before I pay. I'm going to pay the defense alignment before I pay a corner. I'm just being real. I'm just being real. Like you said, we've said this before. You got to divvy that money up. That's the reason why Sneed didn't get his money, because they gave his money to guess who? Jones. Chris Jones. Jones. Chris Jones. <laughs> So that's why he didn't get paid. They couldn't mm-hmm. afford to pay everybody. Pat Mahomes getting paid, Kelsey mm-hmm. getting paid, mm-hmm. and Jones getting paid. So we couldn't pay everybody. Mm-hmm. Somebody got to go. Yeah, but like you said, that's the thing too, and and that's the thing that a lot of a lot of folks really don't talk about is the financial the financials behind it right now. Like you said, got Kurt. Cause, Cause the thing about the thing about that, I think AJ is he got one more year before that fifth year option hit, don't he? Um, he got, yes. Next year, yeah. year. Next year. Yeah, yeah. Next year is his fifth year. So, <clears throat> so is he playing on his fifth year? Is he playing on his fifth year this year? I no, no. Yeah, he's playing on his fifth year yeah. this year. So yeah, they have a decision to make. So his future in Atlanta is going to be solely dependent on him right now. Right. Mm-hmm. It's not it's not it's not necessarily that we don't want AJ here. He's got like I said, he has to kick it up a notch in order for him to get the bag down here. He got two things to do. He gotta want to be here and he gotta play like he wanna be here. Play like he wanna be here because you gotta be a you know on Pro Bowl level. But the second thing is the contract. Chances are you're not going to get the bag because the Falcons got way too many players to even think about right now. We got to think about Tyler's year, whether or not we're going to get him a second uh, contract. We're going into the second contract with Chris Lindstrom. He's about to get paid. And then you got uh, Kyle Pitts in a couple of years. He's going to. So the Falcons, like, he's going to have to want to be here. He's going to have to, you know, I'm going to just be real. He's going to have to have one of those. Um, Caleb McGeary type of contracts. I could have got more money here, but I want to be here in Atlanta for the long term. So I'm gonna, you know, I I don't like the word home time discount because he's still gonna get some pretty good money. But mm-hmm. if he's looking, him and his agents are looking to break the bank. Chances are he's not gonna break the bank here. That ain't happening. I'm just gonna be real. <laughs> He said hometown discount, whatever they want to call it. If you want to be here, we know he's from Georgia. If you want to be on the Falcons, you're not going to be the highest paid corner. I'm telling you that mm-hmm. right now. It's not happening. I think, I think they know, like where well, you're giving them all that money up front. And then it's just like a bunch of, because we know a lot of these contracts. I look at the guaranteed money. I don't look right. at all of this. He got a hundred million. No, he didn't. What mm-hmm. did he get guaranteed up front? Because at some point you're going to be able to get outside of that deal. Mm-hmm. So. He might get a like a, a large sum up front, but other than that, I'm saying he's not going to be the largest or get the largest mm-hmm. contract. And he has to be honest. Let's be real; he hasn't earned it. I like mm-hmm. I love Agent yeah. Terrell. I made yeah. a video saying we should pay the man. I want to pay mm-hmm. him, but you said he got two things to do, Mike. He got one more other thing. I'm gonna add on top of what you said. He got to catch some interceptions. Period. I'm just <laughs> you, you can that, cover yeah. all you want to. But the highest paid got look at the guys that recently got paid. They catch interceptions. I mean, he got a hundred million dollars because he got he gets interceptions. Yeah, I'm just being honest. That sounds mean, but and y'all know I kind of I try to be nice with it. But the real is the real. If you're not getting interceptions and you're a cornerback, the casual fan don't know your name because you're not getting interceptions. And uh-huh. we always say big time players do what make big make time big-time plays. plays. So at the end of the day. You got to when that ball come your way, you can't drop it. You got to make those those key interceptions so people know your name because you're going to be on sports and say he came up with a game winning interception. He had a pick six. That's what Dion and the big the big name guys that we talk about, the corners that are in the Hall of Fame. Those guys were not just good covering. They intercepted the ball when it was time. They they took the ball away. It's a reason why we said Jesse, Jesse Bates earned his money last year. And it wasn't because he had over 100 tackles. It was because the boy was he was interception, you know, intercepting the ball. He let mm-hmm. our team in interceptions. That's why we paid him. It's as simple as that. AJ Terrell, when that ball hit your hands, I need you to catch it. Period. Ooh, yeah. Everybody knows your name. Interceptions. Yeah, because I might say 
um, AJ Terrell hasn't had an interception since 2021. That's not good at all. Um, that's the reason why he don't got a new contract. Let's be real. That's why they, they haven't given him the money. Because they're like, yeah, he covers well. Yeah, he get PBUs. But that's the reason why these other guys are even on the table. Mm-hmm. We wouldn't even talk about Queen. Oh, we ain't be talking. We talk about nothing. Not be talking about getting mm-hmm. intercepted. Uh, but it's like, uh, okay, that's why I said this year he gonna have to like ball out. When I say ball out, interceptions. It ain't just I'm covering. I'm doing my job. You got to take the ball away. That's what the when we keep wanting to throw that word elite out there. When you're an elite cover guy, those guys get interceptions. I'm sorry. And he's given up a passer rating of the last couple of years of 102 and 93.2. So, yeah, it, 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 it's a do or die season for him. Go back to my, my first statement. Pressure either going to bust pipes or it's going to make diamonds. One of the mm-hmm. two. It go two ways. <laughs> But um, y'all want to go ahead and get to the you uh, you, you want to go ahead and get to that other that other topic we got in mind here. You want to go ahead? Oh yeah! Let them know what's going on. Um, I I just think it on. I, th- I think this 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 topic is just absolutely hilarious. It's just like ESPN is so damn messy. It's it's like it's a non factor, but the, the fact that y'all come bringing up this is just absolutely absurd. So the I'm positive you guys saw the the video that I um <laughs> that I put out earlier today, <clears throat> and it's basically that Mr. Robert Kraft allegedly um warned arthur blank about bill belichick now i will say this before i get you guys question uh get you guys take on it i will say this man like it's something just like it's it's i don't think it's a nun i don't think it's a factor but it makes you think because these all three of those guys have always been anytime there's some uh 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 you know a scandal or whatnot, all three of those guys always had three different opinions from the owner, the coach, the player, like nobody knows nothing about anything. You know, Bill Belichick can point the finger at um <laughs> Bill Belichick pointed the finger at Tom Brady. Tom Brady pointed the back at Bill. Bill pointed at that um, Robert Crab. Like nobody knows nothing about anything. So, um, what do you guys take on the rumor that that's coming out from ESPN? Like I said, ESPN always finds a way to try to put the Atlanta Falcons in some drama. They just, for whatever reason, they love the Atlanta Falcons. Um, and I don't understand why the Falcons have anything to even do with this because there's a lot of team that passed up on Bill. It wasn't just the Atlanta Falcons. So did he just run around, you know, the entire NFL snitching on Bill Belichick? No, they didn't say that. They said he specifically told the Atlanta Falcons. And and to be honest, he has nothing to worry about, um, Robert Crabb, with the Atlanta Falcons. Like, they're not going to play the Atlanta Falcons. So that's that's one thing that I'm looking at. I'm like, okay, so why did why did this matter? Um, so what do you guys think on the the idea of the rumors that saying that Robert Kraft dimed out Bill Belichick and warned him about, you know, warned Arthur Blank about becoming uh about trusting Bill Belichick. Go ahead, Jim. You, you want me to go? Okay, I'll go. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, Jim. Um, when, when I seen it, I was just like, owners talk. That didn't take me by surprise. To be honest, like, I said this when we were, when it, his first, his name first came up about the Atlanta Falcons. I was like, my issue, my whole issue with it was that he's going to want power. We know that. And to be honest, it's kind of like well-deserved. 
because I felt like if the Falcons hired Bill Belichick, you're going to have to let him do things his way. He won six Super Bowls, six, seven, whatever he won with the Patriots. So he's going to want, you know, to do it his way. And I feel like if you hire a coach, I've never been that type of uh, fan or, you know, far as the GMs and things of that nature. You know, Bill uh, Parcells once said, if you're going to uh, want me to cook the dinner, then you need to let me shop for the groceries. So I feel like when it comes to Bill Belichick, if we would have brought him here, you were going to have to let him do things his way. And I felt like that was one of the reasons why the Falcons didn't bring him here, because when he was with the Patriots, he was the GM. He was like the uh, judge, jury and executioner. Like he was his team. He wanted Tom Brady going. That's why Tom Brady was going. That's the beef right now with the owner, Robert Kraft and, the, and Bill Belichick. He feels like Bill Belichick pushed Tom Brady out the door too early. Now, personally, do I think he pushed him out the door too early? No, because I feel like the Patriots, the way that their team was aligned at that time, they just were, they didn't have the, the personnel to, you know, get over the hump anymore. They didn't have those players. If you look at that Bucks team, mm. they were completely, and look at that Patriots roster that the last roster that Tom Brady was on when they got eliminated in the playoffs, he didn't have anything really. He didn't have this, you know, other than Gronk, he didn't have, and I think where Gronk had retired at that point, he didn't have like no receivers. That was a COVID year too, G, on top of it. Yeah, yeah. So he just didn't really have anything. So I think that it's a, a bunch of nothing. Really, like when I heard it, I was just like, yeah, I knew this. <laughs> I already knew that. <laughs> like I knew Bill Belichick was going to want power. I said the same thing. I said, if you bring in Bill Belichick in, then you might as well let Terry Fontenot go, let some of these guys in the scouting department go, because Bill's going to want to control mm -hmm. And I feel like I said, if you're going to hire Bill, you got to let the guy do it his way. You can't say, well, I want you to lead us to the promised land and do what you did in New England. But you got to, these are your parameters here. It ain't going to work. If I get hired for a job and I got the resume that Bill Belichick has, that's why people say he has an ego. Well, he deserves to have an ego because he's won at the highest level. Jordan had an ego. He was 6-0. and That's why his teammates, some of his teammates now are, you know, hating on him. Because he had an ego. So when you would one of the greatest, it is what it is. So I felt like if they wanted Bill Belichick, you got to have to be willing to do things his way. That's just how it goes. You know what I'm saying? That's just how it goes in the league. So I really yeah, I think, it's how it's you know, at the end of the day, it's a bunch of nothing. But do I think <laughs> he, really, he really talked to Arthur Blank, uh, Robert Kraft? I really think that that conversation did happen. But I don't think he was telling Arthur Blank anything that he didn't already know. We all knew that things had got, you know, they were things were tight between, you know, Bill Belichick and Robert Kraft that they were, you know, button heads. We already knew that for the last couple of years. We knew that. So that's not new information. Uh, Christy here says ain't no take on it. Bill is now a high side kick for a show for the draft. Even if owners talk, Bill went through two interviews and wasn't hired. Why bring it up? Now, hey man, at at the end of the day, Falcons got the guy they wanted, and, 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 and all the uh, the distractions of Bill Belichick on us made Raheem Morris the guy behind the scenes. And that's what made it an underrated high. I mean, it's just it's just at, at at that point in time, like you said, they wanted to go with somebody that was younger, but somebody that had experience. You know I, don't, I, mean? I don't necessarily agree with that because I think the Falcons mm -hmm. just wanted to recreate the offense that they had um with the uh sixteen team. If you just look at it, this is a recreation of what we're doing now. They're, they're just recreating the sixteen offense. Like the balance with the running backs, the passing game, you bought in all these wide receivers. I I just don't think Bill aligned with what the majority of the Atlanta Falcons uh staff in its entirety. This wasn't just a, 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 a coaching. This was um the investors, this was the, the front office guy, it was the coaches, all that they, they wanted to align the offense to what you know what what they deemed to what fans want and what got them there. 
what got them there is having a quarterback that could pass the ball, having a passing game, having a running game, having a defense that mm-hmm. could get after the quarterback and get turnovers at the right time. That's what got us to a Super Bowl. So I just don't think um, just looking back at it now, Bill Belichick, the way that he wanted to build the team, especially his offense, uh, it was more conducive to what Arthur Smith want, like his vision for his offense. I think they just wanted – I honestly believe that they wanted to just recreate 16 offense. And like I said, when you look at it now, this is exactly what it is. He's a poor man's version of Matt Ryan. He gets the ball out of his hand quick, and he gets the ball to the playmaker. That's Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan had two running backs. He had Tico, and he had uh, Devontae Freeman. He, we got Freeman oh, – we got uh, Tyler Algier, and we got B. John Robinson. We got a tight end. I mean, everything you're seeing right now is just a recreation of what 16 was. And and, and this is why people got at uh, the therapist ATL, a.k.a. Ron Drill, a.k.a. Juan, um, saying that they're recreating, you know, this, this is going to be, you know, a, a high octane pass first, uh, pass centric offense. This is exactly what they want to do. So I don't think this was a shot at Bill Belichick. I just think that off the, I just think the team just had a different vision, and they went with the vision that they wanted versus what what Bill wanted. Mm. And to be honest, it was just the smartest thing to do. Pick piggybacking on what you said. Like you've heard Raheem Morris say that I just came in and built, you know, building on what was already here, the foundation that was here. I feel like if you would have brought Bill Belichick here, you probably would have had to tear it down again and then rebuild it because he would have probably wanted this team to be more of a defensive-centric uh-huh. team because he's a defensive-minded coach. So like when you talk about Arthur uh, Smith, like being a run first, you know, physical in the trenches, you know, defense, run the ball, you know, possess the football, that's what Bill Belichick believes in. So – just based off of what we already had here, it just goes back to what you said, Mike. Like, you know, you bring in Raheem Morris, he already has the pieces in place. And you, who better to hire to run the, you know, to try to recreate the 2016, you know, what we did in 2016 than somebody that was on the staff? He was on the staff. So you mm-hmm. basically just brought in somebody <laughs> right. from Dan Quinn, like one of his understudies, and dropped them right. So he already has the familiarity. And what I like about it is, he tasted the blood of 2016. So if we were to win the Super Bowl, it would be like poetic justice because he was at the scene of, the, you know, at the, the scene, scene of, of the crime. crime. Yeah, <laughs> he's seen it firsthand. So he know what we're going through as Falcons fans. Like Arthur Smith and all these coaches that came in behind uh, Dan Quinn saying, like, I understand what you guys are going through. It ain't nobody else that understand it more than them guys that was on that sideline and in that locker room after that 2016 Super Bowl and walked off that field with confetti falling and watching the Patriots hold up that trophy when we had the game at hand. So he pissed. Like, I don't mm-hmm. care what nobody say. Raheem Morris is pissed because he was on that coaching staff. So if anybody won't pay back, he, he understands what we're going through as fans. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like this. I don't give a damn about what they said. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> The situation that, that 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 whole situation was three months ago. We we let that we to move past that now. Yeah, we, we don't we we ain't gonna hold on to that. But I think we're gonna go just go ahead and get a few questions. Get a, get a couple questions in here before we go ahead and roll out. Um, we got about I say about ten more minutes, so we're gonna let y'all go ahead and roll some questions out in here. Q and A it Q and A it up. Um, like I said, we got 89 people in here. Definitely appreciate y'all in here as always. Um, like you said, hit that share, like you said, share, share with your peoples. Hit that like button. And if you're not subscribed to the Heavy Hitters Live, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Notifications on all so you can catch so you can catch the live as every on. make sure it's on all make sure you click it because if you don't click the all tab you won't get every one of them is the it's defaulted to get some so when you hit that subscribe button make sure you hit all the notifications because we've been getting a lot of complaints about 
um youtube not sending the notification on is because it's defaulted to sometimes yes. yeah youtube trying to uh they're trying to secretly uh shadow man you boys that's all that's all yeah, yeah they they, they all that. the content created they try, they're trying to make it so much harder for the uh, all the content creators so it's defaulted to sometimes so make sure y'all hit all notifications so when we go live when you myself they start drop a video y'all will get them immediately when they come exactly so all right well all right so we've already kind of covered that that was the eric matt question we just kind of covered out so definitely shout out to eric matt for that one um Let's see, we got one right here. So we're probably going to keep talking about this, but um, JD said, how do y'all feel about Dallas Turner since everybody thinks he's the pick? I just hope they pick him. I hope they're not playing with my emotions. That's what I hope. <laughs> I just hope they're not playing with everybody's emotions. Like, we, I, I don't know if you guys recently seen, um, you know, DJ Shockley, and all those guys, they were talking about who they might pick. And they were talking about Dallas Turner, but I just hope that they actually pick him because you never know. You never know on draft night. We don't know. It could be a team in front of us that take him. We don't know. A team could trade up. So that's why we always say we don't know. I hope they get him, but at the end of the day, we don't know. They might go with a corner. They they got to do what they feel is right. At the end of the day, I just say I want to see this team succeed. It ain't really about them picking who I want them to pick. I just want us to have success. And I thought that it was crazy. And I was listening to DJ Shockley and Derek Rackley and um, Arch. They basically was uh, one of them mentioned like we haven't had a double digit sack player since uh, Vic Beasley, which was 2016, which I thought was wild. That's wild. You telling me since 2016, we haven't had a guy that got 10 sacks. That's crazy. So that's why I say until we get it right, draft, draft an age every year until we get it right, because we that's ridiculous to me. Man, that's all about it. You know who fought it is? It's that damn look that man who look like Johnny Bravo. That's who it that's who it is. Got a hook the haircut like Johnny Bravo. It, that that the damn problem. It was him. All these damn wide receivers and third rate damn offensive linemen that he wanted to pick. <laughs> Motherfucker that looked like ludicrous. Like no, no, he ain't right there. But that you, you get the picture. You get the picture. Yeah. Think about think about this. The last three pass rushers we've had that had double digit sacks were Vic Beasley, John Abraham, and Patrick Curry. Think about that for a second, y'all. Let me get, do I need to say that one more time, Mike? No, mm -mm, mm -mm. I'm gonna say it one more time. <laughs> anyway. So the last three. Pass rush, the last three guys that we've had that had 10 plus sacks Vic Beasley, John Abraham, Patrick Kern. We got, we drafted <laughs> Tack McKenna who came in with shoulder issues. Just think about that. He got drafted with shoulder issues. Let me say it one more time, y'all. <laughs> We ain't had a 10 sack season from a we've only had three 10 season sack players in the last 20 years. Look, they they, they drift up hot dogs with Oscar Mayer wieners. I mean them, you call them Vienna sausages, that's what they kept putting next to Greedy Jerry. <laughs> he bought a big ass hamburger and started putting a bunch of Vienna sausages around him. And say, yep, yeah, let's go, let's go get, get 12 sacks. What what? <laughs> you put a bunch of crap around Grady Jerry and didn't do nothing, do anything to if you brought in De Derek Shelby, like what? Well, like, he, he couldn't stay healthy. He couldn't stay he, healthy. He dropped, we got we up. we brought the Dallas dude. I forget his name. Um but uh, we brought we had Allen Bailey, that didn't work. Charles Harris, Osiu Minyora, Paul Soli, Ray Edwards, 
Dante uh, Fowler, Dante who was Fowler. injured. He had a, a torn ACL. We brought him in. Like we brought in a whole bunch of broken guys. Croy Beer, man. Like you said, the, the the history of pass rushes for the last twenty years really has not been great. Don't don't bring up. We not run, bringing up Route ninety six. That he we he no 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 he he nope nope. We not doing that. Mm -mm. We not mm 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 mm. Route ninety six has been destroyed and it done turned into a country town. Still, I don't even know if he's still in the lead. They ain't even say if he retired or not. I don't even know if he's mm -mm. still in the lead. I haven't even. <laughs> But, I um, seen Auntie here got a question. She said, uh, who is your late round gems in the draft for the Falcons? Give me one second, y'all. I got to look up the, the guy that I was just uh, – I mentioned one of my – what's the word? Which was James Williams, uh, safety. Slash God damn it, Jew, you did it again. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, mentioned him, uh, I mentioned him on um, – on what's the word, but it's a wide receiver that I wanted to talk about. Let me see. I got to pull this you, you did it again. But, <laughs> oh but that's gosh. cool. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> now, I like James Williams, though. We seven away from 700, so I appreciate everybody for hitting that subscribe button, man. Make sure you tell your people about um, the Heavy Hitters Live. This is where all of the uh post game live shows for the atlanta falcons is gonna be it's gonna be here it's gonna be um at atlanta falcon nation so make sure y'all hit that subscribe button um here okay y'all uh, so his name is javon baker javon baker javon baker Oh yeah. yeah, I think they said yeah. they were supposed to be looking at him. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want that light skin. My, nut. My, 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 I'm talking about Jermaine Burton. I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck him. Okay. <laughs> Fuck him. Some bitch you gonna leave after no man. Oh boy. Y'all yeah, don't know that. how much I hate Burton. I mm, 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 mm. Late round gems, late round gems. This yeah, is UCF. Guy. That's why uh, he played for UCF. I'm gonna do a video about him, Javon Baker. But he started at Alabama, wide receiver. But he's one of those guys. Y'all check him out on YouTube. His highlights and his some tape on him. But he's a he's good at the catch point, and he's a guy that can get yak yardage. So he's a guy that can catch a slant, take it a distance. But he transferred from Alabama, as Mike said. If you're not a top top dog and we know alabama be having five and six and seven you know top wide receivers so he ended up transferring from bama and went to ucf but he's one of those guys that i think is a sleeper i think he visited with the falcons he was one of the 30 guys that visited the falcons but he'll be a later pick and he probably like third fourth round you could probably get him even maybe later than that so y'all check him out he's one of those guys that like i said at the catch point, he can make real difficult catches, can high point the ball, but also is really good. Once he gets the ball in his hands, bubble screen, he one of those guys that can take it to the house. But a physical wide receiver, really good wide receiver. Mm. Okay, okay. We since, since, since we talking about late round gems, late round gems. I have to bring my list out because uh that says Jew says Jew Jew named the one I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> that's all that's all good. The mic then got me like that plenty of times. But um I, I, I if I had to pick somebody that was a late round pick who I would say is a gem. I was I will say I will stick with the corner position with tonight's theme, and I'll say Kyrie Jackson. He played at Oregon, right? Mm -hmm. Out of Oregon, okay. Yeah, I, uh, that, that like you said that that that's if they decide that's if they decide to like go multiple corners or 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 decide to get their corner number two in the mid to late rounds. I think Kyrie Jackson. Is one of my late round gems anyway. I know, I know, damn Trevon Sweat was my mid round until he couldn't lay off the drink. Drink. <laughs> yeah, drink. 
But um, well, man, I don't, God damn, James Williams. Oh, I'm like, God damn, I'm, I'm, like, I'm like, that's all right. <laughs> and you know, you know, I gotta get you like that one time. So um, we're gonna go ahead and wind it down for the night, y'all. Uh, definitely appreciate y'all tuning in to the Heavy Hitters Live, and definitely make sure you go ahead and get your ticket for the red and black event at the where in the summertime baby Ooh, yeah. so make sure you hit up this maggie t and mad my sports for more mm-hmm. details and more ticket information um you never know who's gonna be there so uh stay tuned um so definitely appreciate my Appreciate you. Appreciate everybody that was in the chat tonight conversing. Um, oh, trauma lot as have I seen any new sports? Um, yeah, they actually got this one. Um, damn it, what the what's that shit called? All I know is like dodgeball with dodgeballs with uh, uh plastic maces or something like that. I saw something, it was it was crazy as hell. Oh, 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 I know what he talked about. He talked about the, 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 the car seat jiu-jitsu tournament. Yeah. <laughs> the car seat jiu-jitsu tournament is real, y'all. <laughs> yeah, don't make me take out my hat. Yeah, yeah. So basically, it's a competition between two dudes sitting in the front seat. They got to use jujitsu is all that stuff to get out the front seat. <laughs> the fuck is he, Jackie Chan or something? What the hell? <laughs> Oh, that shit happened. Oh, they right saw with a Jackie Chan movie. How he be damn flipping in the back seat and cars and all that. Chris did all... said the power slap lead. Yeah, that that's crazy. Um uh hold on, what was it? Some damn jujitsu car seat built. Like, what the <laughs> hey bro, that, that thing was funny, man. Cause they they cause that the whole purpose is they supposed to fight each other. First they 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 got their seat belts on, right? Okay, so first they gotta take their seat belts off and beat each other down. The first one to get out the car wins. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm gonna show I'm gonna show I'm gonna show I'm gonna show you I'm gonna show you here soon. But appreciate y'all. Till next time. We got six man combo coming up tomorrow. Some damn power slam. <laughs> Until next time, y'all. We ain't here to play. Oh no. We're here to stay. Oh yeah, nigga. You ain't gotta go home. But you got to get the hell out of here. Oh yeah. Deuces. Deuces. Okay. I will smile.